In America, we toss it off as just another nuisance factor in our day. Road rage. No big deal, really. Let the other gal flip you the bird, scream away, back off, let the idiot seeking to prove how manly he is by blocking your way go about his business and do what you can to diffuse the situation. But often, it's not that easy because almost everyone within the sound of my voice is doing it every single day. Go ahead, admit it. AAA reports that nearly 80% of drivers nationwide admit to being the road rager in the last year. Cops in the San Francisco Bay Area are not suggesting, instead telling people, stay in their car if you think a situation is escalating, especially if you're a guy or there's a male involved, because men are three times more likely to exit their car and confront another driver in what becomes a little more than macho idiocy. But it comes down to vehicles being used as weapons, something the world is talking about today in light of events in Paris. Let's talk reality and technology on this and a whole lot more. Welcome back the nationally syndicated expert of everything automotive, pedal to the metal with the car coach, Lauren Fix joins us on the show. Lauren, good to talk to you again. It's, it's a tough subject that I want to broach yeah. with you here today. But this is something that came up in conversation today when we were talking about what happened in Paris with a vehicle that is being used as a weapon by somebody else. And the question came up, what happens if the technology eventually gets to a place where cops can turn off vehicles, where they can figure out how to do it. Now, granted, insurance companies can already do this because if you have a vehicle, it is something that you have payments on. You basically have the, the renovators, if you will, the, uh, the repossessors who can go out. They can shut a car off with a kind of a signal to basically mm -hmm. take the car out of business. But aren't we talking more about science fiction here? Because the technology that's involved in doing this, you'd have to know every car. You'd have to have a code. You'd have to have that code in front of you. Or am I talking about something that may actually be realistic one day? Well, it's actually realistic, Ed, and I, I'm glad to be back. You know, one of the things that I, I tell people is there's this new V to V, vehicle to vehicle communication. So if you're driving down the road, you're 10 miles in front of me and there's an ambulance and I'm coming to an accident that you are already maybe stopped, I will get a notification saying, hey, there's a, an accident up ahead, you might want to reroute. This is true, this has, I've seen the testing on it through Continental, I was in Berlin, Germany, uh, this is coming, General Motors said they're gonna be one of the first vehicles to have it. Now, will the police be able to shut you down? They'd have to know which vehicle you are, and each exactly. vehicle is identified by a vehicle identification number. Sure, it's possible, but you can't tell which vehicle it is unless you've got OnStar or something similar. So the dilemma remains that this is a possibility and maybe that not too far in the future because of GPS and triangulation. But what happened in France is horrible. And I know, I know there's a lot of people, a little, it's a teeny bit political. I know they always say, take away the guns, but you can't take away the trucks. And crazy people are gonna do crazy things. It's those normal people that I, like to call myself one of them and you as well <laughs> that and then you're and hopefully your viewers as well that there are times you just have to take a step back and say i can't get involved in this war somebody you know needed to get in front of me maybe they're rushing to an accident maybe uh maybe somebody's in a hospital you don't know somebody's that. having so, a baby somebody needs to get to the hospital quickly somebody is injured right. somebody's as a matter of fact we were talking about this today there was an instant coming up where i mentioned uh, a report i saw last year where a gentleman driving an 18-wheeler suffered a heart attack and the truck was out of control. His foot got pinned down on the gas pedal. It killed him in the accident, I understand. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, well, you could turn the vehicle off or you could shoot the tires out. You can't do that. You don't know what's going on behind the wheel of the vehicle, so you can't just exactly. automatically assume that something like that is a, is a terror act. That could actually be worse if you shot the, if, if let's say a police officer said, oh my gosh, truck's driving too fast, we're gonna shoot the tires out. That truck, especially if you're talking about a big truck like that, or in this case, it was a livery vehicle, it could actually fall over or run into other vehicles. So you have to kind of look at the situation and assess it each time. Just like when you're thinking about road rage and you think, boy, that jerk just cut me off. I'm going to go get him. You have to think, really? What, what are you going to get that person with? You're going to cut them off? And since, like your mom said, two wrongs don't make a right. So you have to start thinking about these type of possibilities and, and have some courtesy on the road. You know, anytime someone's in a rush and I see them passing me at 100 miles an hour, I keep thinking, well, maybe there, it's an emergency and I'll, and I don't want to be a part of their accident either. So just go ahead and do your thing. Don't include me. Uh, I guess when I was younger, I was probably more like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go get you. You know, uh, you know, 
I, I've chosen my wars a little wiser as I've gotten but older. But how do we really stop this? I mean, we started out talking about road rage and that 80% of drivers nationwide admit to having expressed road rage. I see it every yeah. single day on the way to work. Every single day. I mean, where did this start? Is it just frustration at the roadways? Frustration because we can't get where we're going? We're in a hurry. We're watching our cell phones. It's gotten out of hand, oh. and I really don't know where this all started. You know, it's, it's been going on for a long time. Now, you've got people being distracted. Forget just the cell phones. You've got eating while driving. I've seen shaving while driving, reading while driving, distracted by your children, a dispute, something going on in your life. You know, it's interesting. I just came back from Austria. We were there testing race cars. We drove from Frankfurt all the way down to this little city called Spielberg. Quite a ride, three and a half hours. Beautiful roads, and you know what? Not one, not one person was on the phone. You flash your lights, they move over. That's the way it should be. So this has to do with, one, training from the beginning, knowing what to do with your vehicle. If every person on the road was retested, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. Good for you. You don't yep. pass the test, we you take away your license. You got a problem with that? Take a class. Learn how to be a safer driver. And once you do that, if you we follow the way they do graduated licensing in Germany, yeah, it's expensive. Sure, it's a pain in the butt, but it's not a privilege. People think, it's, you know, it's, uh -huh. oh, I, I deserve it. It's... A, it's because I'm an American citizen. No, it actually, I take that back. It is a, it it is, is a privilege. It is a privilege. It's it. not a right to drive. It. It's a privilege you're granted. And you have to earn it. You know, and it's funny because we made our kids take additional driver training. They race cars. We race cars. And so because of that, I tend to be more aware of things on the road than other people. I cannot tell you how many people I see driving. And I've been in the passenger seat with some where they look just at the nose of the car. And I even told my girlfriend the other day, I said, shift your vision up. Look far down the road. It opens your peripheral vision. And she said, wow, I wish they told me that when I was 16 because <laughs> now I can actually see what's going on around me rather than just the taillights in front of you. It's a smart tip. All right, now, on the road. 90 seconds to go. Let's get something in here very quickly here. A lot going on with Tesla. Consumer oh, Reports yes. says they should drop the disconnect steering feature. They should drop the name of the autopilot. autopilot feature because they say that people believe it is completely autonomous. It's not. And Tesla says the autopilot was not on in a recent Pennsylvania crash. But it just seems to a lot of people as if they're not being very forward with what's going on here. So true. Would you like to be a beta tester on my brand new car? Well, guess what? Everyone that's buying Teslas with the beta tester, which is autopilot, is the beta tester for Tesla. They have been asked to have the name change. He hasn't. He lets people believe that's this Elon is Musk you're talking about. Driving. Elon Musk, he's, he's very arrogant, so he's not about to change the name. He says, hey, they've got autopilot when it comes to an airplane. We'll do autopilot when it comes to a car. Branding-wise, yes, I get it. But in reality, consumers think that they can keep their hands off the wheel. Go to YouTube. You'll see billions of videos of idiots with their arms crossed saying, look, I don't have to touch the oh, wheel. Yeah. It drives for me. It's dangerous. It's stupid. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. And I'll tell you what, he's going to pay for this because he's now going into a congressional hearing before the end of this month. And we will see what happens because now there's all kinds of things. No more buyback programs. The battery is only good for one life cycle. There's so much press out there. I'm, I'm posting it as quick as I can get on my Twitter account, at Lauren Fix. Let me tell you, there's a lot going on with Tesla, including that solar city nightmare. That's bad news as well. It is not an autopilot, people. It's not what it says. All the right. Autonomous listen cars up. available And today. listen, I'm all with you. Every two years get retested. I want to bring emissions yes. testing back, in, back yes. for cars anymore because they're awful. They're terrible. The actual inspections that go on here because the cars are junk that are driving on the road. Here we go. We've seat. started all these governmental things now, and people are going to be saying, what are Maybe Fix and Berliner doing right I now? Could take, I could take over NHTSA <laughs> for them and show them how to run away. Or Do it. Transfer do yeah, it yeah. every single time. Don't forget, go to LaurenFix.com, learn about all this and a whole lot more from the lady who knows everything there is about automotive. You need to take a lesson. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Rock on, true believers. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here Monday. Good night and good luck.